Six percent, beautiful. I probably should get a charger, eh? Um, have I got enough time to grab a charger? I need a charger, just a laptop charger. Do you want to grab my laptop charger for me? Just in my my bag. Yep. Tuck in those keys then. Tuck that in for me. Perfect. <laughs> Should have just numbered the six percent. Ah, shouldn't have told me. Been right. happening on live. Ready? Yep, let's do it. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Thanks uh, for joining us for another Camera Pro webinar. I've got a very special uh, webinar today with two lads who are real estate property photographers, videographers, uh, automotive specialists as well. They, uh, they've done a lot of video work in fashion as well um, and stills. Um, and they've been featured on such shows as Lux Listings, um, which is a Sydney-based real estate uh, photography and videography, um, just showing a lot of the talents of the local area as well, um, with Gavin Rubenstein, who is quite um, an Instagram um, and real estate legend. Um, but I just want to introduce the boys today. So I've got, I've got with me Tom. How you going? And Cameron, how are you? Um, Tom, we'll start with you. Um, starting X Media, how did, you, how did you come about starting X Media? What was, how did you, <laughs> sorry. How did, how did we bring X Media into this? So when, when you yeah. were starting out, was it something after school that you? Yeah, it's about? a bit of a long story. It's, um, so after school, my best mate and I um, were living down the Gold Coast. Um, I was studying marketing and he was studying international business. Yep. Um, just cruising around, doing part-time jobs, mm -hmm. not doing very much, surfing, yeah. relaxing. Yep. Um, whilst we were studying, um, I got given a drone from my mum yep. one birthday or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and then we did a lot of surfing, took the drone out, started filming some, some of our mates surfing one weekend. Yep. Um, Ben was like, my best mate, he was like, we should do something with that footage, mm -hmm. like it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Pulled it up on like the shittiest editing mm. software you could on, yeah. on a Mac. Yeah. Um, I think it was Movie Maker, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, he put something together, we posted it, and then a few mates posted it on Instagram, mm. um, and then a few mates saw it, um, and that was our very first job, and mm. then from that it led to another gig, um, filming a kitchen. Yeah. Was it this, at this stage, it was more of a fun thing? Oh, you, yeah, we both like, had jobs, so yeah. that was the best thing. Like, we had jobs, we didn't need to rely on it, it was just mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Um, so we shot, yeah, kitchen, and then someone knew that person, that um, our client, that was the kitchen yeah. client, and they had a gym, yep. so we shot the gym. These were all, like, $50, $100 yep. jobs. Yeah, um, just cash Not paying for anything, paying for beers on the weekend. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, did that, and then literally it just, yeah, just... We worked hard at it. Ben got better at it. Yep. I like um, getting clients and meeting people. Mm -hmm. And I started going to networking events. Yep. Um, met a lot of people at that. Yep. And that was the basis of our first clients. And they weren't like very good clients. Mm. We don't have any of them anymore, yeah. really. But they, um, they were a start. Started so that sort of started it all off. Yeah. yeah. And when, like, when did the business side of things start to click for you? When, is that something you were passionate about yeah. always? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I... Um, worked when I was 19, I worked for like an online uh, villa rental company mm -hmm. and like I was going over to Bali uh, every three, three months, yep. four months, staying there for like three weeks on my own, um, like hustling, signing up villa owners yep. over there yep. um, to put them on our website um, here in Australia. Yep. So I always liked doing business um, side of things and did studied you, at uni as well. Yeah, at uni. Um, is that, no film for me, just, just marketing. Marketing? Business okay. marketing. So yeah, I, I definitely love that yep. side of things. And I did a bit of just the, your, your typical Google um, AdWords, SEO, mm. all that kind of stuff, yep. social media advertising. Yep. Um, and I even, that was actually what we did along with video to start with, was a bit of social media advertising. Is that what you were doing at uni originally? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Cool. Yeah, and that was like, Probably the only thing I've ever enjoyed doing at university. Nice. Um, so yeah, that kind of kick-started that side and Ben um, had a keen eye for, for film. Yep. 
So was this was he lucky? studying that as well? Is that he wasn't that studying. Was kind of second nature. No, he yeah. did um, quite a bit at school as well, um, film-wise. But other than that, just just casual stuff. And then as soon as we got the drone, that yeah. sort of kick-started it. Because um, the drones are kind of like the wild west in those days. Like you could just oh, pick yeah. up a drone, fly. And oh like, yeah, we didn't have to worry about the stipulations and the laws and any yeah. of that sort of stuff. No yeah, commercial so licenses. No, nah, it was just <laughs> do whatever you want. And, yeah. um, this was like quite a, quite some time ago, and people would just like every second person would be like, "What's that drone doing mm. up there?" Whereas now it's a bit more relaxed. Yeah, but you've got. You, yeah, you back then it was pretty. Funny. Also, at the same time, it's not very relaxed. You still get. Yeah, a few, you still get a few heckles. Asking questions. Yeah, no <laughs> so, doubt, no yeah. doubt. And Cam, how did you come into X Media? How did, how was your entry point? Uh, my entry point was actually Instagram. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think I was six months out of high school. Yep. Um, and I sent. I sent Tom an Instagram message and I basically said, love what you guys are doing. Yep. You know, nice. Sent in an edit that I made with um, my Mavic. Yep. So I'd, that's kind of how I started dipping into video. Just slid into well. the DMs. Yeah, and then <laughs> I sent the edit, slid into the DMs and he was like, all right, let's, let's grab coffee. And yeah, nice. kind of went from there. So. And how long have you been part of the X Media team for now? What's that? Two, two and a half years now? Yep. yep. So, yeah. And, and so what's, what's your typical day to day role within X Media? Um, so I am the director of photography. Mm -hmm. um, so every week looks different, yep. obviously, yep. Um, depending on shoots and stuff. But the average day will be either going to a shoot or staying in the office and editing. Nice. Um, most of the time, it's both. Like after yep. shoot in the morning, get back, edit the shoot, that yep. sort of thing. So. And you're when you saying entry point in, into obviously X Media was it something that you were keenly in? Previous to that? Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, because um, a lot of people will want to know how, how to join X Media, <laughs> yeah. what their starting point is going to look like. Yeah. Well, I think they had a few less followers back then. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Might be a bit more. Got in early. Now. You reckon? Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Um, but yeah, that's that's how it all started. Yep. Cool. Um, but before then, I've I've always been surrounded by cameras mm -hmm. my whole life. Mm -hmm. My dad was a photographer. Nice. So having them around me all the time, I was always a bit curious. Yep. And then. Um, yeah, I think I was probably 13 when I actually picked up the camera Jeez, and started, yeah. started playing around with it, yep. seeing what I could do. And do you do a, like a, a mixture of everything now? Do you do photos, video, drone work, stuff like that? Or is drone, that, for sure. Yeah. yeah, A lot of drone work because um, that's sort of where I really started doing some professional stuff. Um, but primarily photos at mm -hmm. the moment. I'd say 90% of the time it's photos. Yep. Um, yeah, the rest is drone, a few video edits here and there. Yeah. Because sometimes it can tie into the photos as well. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah. He also joined us at 17. Like, yeah. that's something that that's people good, don't yeah. think about. Like, with no resume, no yeah. real work experience. Yeah. Um, just skills. And, like, I think people always uh, underappreciate just doing quality work. And that's what he had. Like, no one cares about age anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in two and a half years, he's gone from earning, you know, a lower salary to earning a lot more than some of my friends my age. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. yeah, like even in this industry without a degree, um, you certainly can um, progress your career. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Nice. No, that's, that's a really good story because obviously traditionally to get a job, you know, obviously come with a resume and you've got to you bide your time. But if you're willing yeah. to put in the work and show, yeah. show that you, you can do it, you can do it quite digitally now. And I think progressingly we've we've got this digital platform where if you can do something quite unique or or show you've got talent from the get-go there's opportunities for you out there 100 instagram's a resume now yeah, yeah. yep exactly <laughs> yeah, right 100%. and, and NF, nfts are probably going to become a resume yeah. as well who knows <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> we'll see i need to get my bread up first but yeah, yeah. um talking a bit more about x media how yeah. long have you guys have been in business for now, would you say? Um, so three years in July, yep. last July, so yep. three and a half now. Yep. Um, we started with, yeah, just three of us. Mm -hmm. um, ben and I hired a couple of other people um, running a business before X Media. Yep. Um, sort of learned a lot of le valuable lessons then mm -hmm. about what to do, what not to do, yep. um, business lessons, um, and then started um, the new company X Media three years ago. Sure. Um, brought one on. And then quickly, as soon as we built up enough clients, brought another on, yep. um, kept going. That was over in Paddington mm -hmm. um, in a studio over there. And then, yeah, just recently in July last year, we moved here into Tenerife into like a, a massive 
Massive, Massive office okay. with like nine, nine of us now. So happens to be right next door to Cameron. It is next door to Cameron. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's why you invited us here. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Thought you'd invite you down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it's been like a really quick journey, but at the same time, it feels like it's been a lot, quite a while since we first started. Yeah, awesome. And so you started off quite a small team acquiring gear and stuff. How did you go about that um, capacity yeah. of it? Because obviously it's quite an expensive journey. So expensive. Yeah. How's yeah. it been for you to, to be able to, to start piece by piece? Has it just yeah. been like layer, layer for you? Or has it yeah. been, have you ever been quite fortunate with, with areas and a lot of the guys have brought their own gear? Or yeah, so, that, yeah, no, we don't, we don't try to stick away from that. Like, mm. everyone's had their own gear and we kind of don't want people using their gear. I want yeah. them to, to use ours, yeah. have the quality that we expect. Mm. Um, then there's no excuses if it's not exactly how we want it or, yep. or um, the style we do it. Mm. Um, so like everyone's wanted to bring their gear on, but rather they leave that, use that on the weekends at mm. home. And then we have like this um, war chest of gear that I call it. Yeah, <laughs> I always laugh at yeah, that. Yeah. But it's sort of like things we've handpicked specifically because we know they work, reliable, um, easy to use, things like that. Um, so yeah, it's kind of started with getting a drone from my mum. Mm. Ben's mum helped out. Yeah couple nice. thousand dollars for yeah. a camera um, and then yeah so we we're running like a Mavic 2 or a Mavic 1 back yeah. in the day and like Sony a, Sony A6300 oh, nice. and they were just like you know yeah bottom tier yeah. Um, but then as soon as we invested every dollar back in that was the only investment we ever had mm. from our parents um, still yet to pay them back <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah and since then we just sort of put every last dollar yeah. including up until about six months ago yeah we've been spending every cent and it's gone from that to you know sony's black magic mm. and then fortunately enough we got a red last or two years ago yep which was like obviously that's like a significant yeah. investment so that's like a grail type section right <laughs> yeah yeah so we were bucket list. stoked about that we yeah. didn't even know how to use it to be honest yeah that's... still don't <laughs> nah. yeah no nah, we know how to use it now but yeah. yeah that was like once we got to that point we're like okay we can probably chill out on that mm. now and then in turn instead of cameras it's lighting and tripods yeah. and servers and yeah. house it, it obviously is. like known in my freelance business as well it just never ends it's just like it's, cost it's so annoying occur. yeah it never ends you've got to spend money to make money and yeah. yeah yeah and but it's funny because like as soon as we bought the red people want to pay you more mm. yeah. we didn't get any better right. the night before yeah. we bought it to the day after, but yeah. suddenly people want to pay more. So yeah. there is something to it. Yeah. Um, and obviously the footage is amazing off yeah. those cameras, but Absolutely. yeah, there's definitely something to that and the psychology of like the consumer as well. Behind it. Which is interesting. I think it's a, like a trust thing. They, yeah. see, they see that you're able to get such gear, like mm. a red, oh, yeah. and it's like, all right. For sure, we'll these guys must be a bit more serious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. it's the same with when the cameras started going mirrorless, they got a bit smaller and then people thought, like you turn up to a, a shop right. or a set yeah. and you've got a smaller camera, yep. instantly you're not, a, you're not a good photographer. You must not be professional because you don't Show have a big camera. Show up with an R5 three years ago and everyone Ex like, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. But the work you can do on the smaller cameras these days is pretty exceptional. Yeah, Obviously the red's lovely. And what, what do you guys typically shoot, Cam? Um, so I'm now always on the R5. Yep. Um, so before that it was the 5D Mark IV. Mm -hmm. um, the beast. The beast that, yeah. that was the original. It was Love weird going camera. from that, you know, you get yeah. the raw Just mechanical sound of the shutter and everything. It's a bigger camera, it's heavier, and then you go to the R5 and yeah. you, it's it's a whole different story. Yeah, it's, um, you get a bit worried about le like leaving it somewhere or something like yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Takes a small <laughs> yeah. hit. Something you don't even know it's there sometimes. Yeah. But yeah. Okay, and so and lens true. selection. Like obviously, there's going to be a lot of guys out there going to be saying, "What's in your kit?" Yes. You're going to give us a little bit of a, an insight yeah. to that? Yep. Yeah. So um, on the R5, I've got the 17mm tilt shift, 24mm mm -hmm. um, tilt shift, 35, 1.4, 24 to 70, 2.8, 70 to 200, 2.8, yep. and 14mm, 1.4. Nice. So everything. So basically, the, all, the, the, all the L series. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes it, you know, it gives you a few more options when you're yep. on a shoot, when you're able to use the whole range. And, so. and when, you, when you're filming and obviously taking imagery, what's the turn, what sort of turnaround time do you promise a client? Does it depend on, on the client themselves? It, yeah, it does depend on the project. Yep. Um, you know, obviously the, the project where you're shooting five 
thousand, sometimes up to like seven thousand mm. photos, you you're gonna offer you want more time to edit. Yeah. So you're gonna say maybe two or three weeks sometimes. Mm. Um, but with the real estate ones, mm. they want quick. them they want them quick. The turnaround time's yeah. pretty rapid, isn't so it? So most of the time we try and do twenty four hours mm. for real estate Jeez. stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's um, pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah, it gets you under the pump a bit. Yeah, for sure. Because when you're planning and stuff, you you then have to plan, you know, you got the shoot on then yep. and you then have twenty four hours mm. to edit them. So mm. you can't book two shoots right next to each other mm. if you're and, I th and, and I'm sure, as every real estate agent tells you, there's, there's no sleep time. There's, there's 24 7 pedal it's to the metal yep. as well. Yep. So, is that like, does that turn into a seven day week for you guys? No. No? <laughs> I tell <laughs> one thing. <laughs> no. That's a rule that you've set yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. No early, weekends. Late, late no it down weekends. early. Yeah. Okay. No weekends. Yeah. yeah. The agents always get a bit pissed off about it. Yeah. But it's just, it is what it is. Works, work, but you mm. live your life. Like, it's, yeah. it's like not that important to me anyway. Like, yeah. Nine to five, Monday to Friday, you can catch us whenever you need. Yeah. But outside of that, like, and they work Saturdays as well, so it's yeah. a bit tricky yeah. sometimes. They we do have a couple of clients work twenty four seven. Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of like auctions and over yeah, there is a couple of jobs that yeah. they get through. Yeah. yeah. Our um our video turnarounds not twenty four hours. Though. Yeah. We do yeah. more like three days for property videos, mm -hmm. um, and then for bigger scale productions, which is what we've sort of been focused on the last year or so. Yeah. Um, could be two weeks, three weeks, yep. could go over three months. Like it's, it, you never know, it's all, all dependent on the project. Certainly, and, and obviously the scale, scalability yeah. for it all as well. Absolutely. Especially when they have changes as well that are constantly making, you know. Yeah, no, no client's time. ever really happy on the first no. run. <laughs> Very rare. <laughs> so that can sometimes make it a much, much lengthier process. Yeah. And obviously talking about some of the big jobs, Lux mm. listings, which is a pretty, pretty massive show, I think, in, yep. the, in the reality TV circles in Australia, for sure. How did that come about? Um, it was just our relationship with Gavin, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we so we, Ga Gavin's Sydney-based, right? Sydney-based, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was our first Sydney client. Yep. So, um, so there's a real estate agent up here called Matt Lancashire, mm -hmm. um, and he does a lot of, he's the number one agent in Queensland. Yep. Um, and we did a video for him a few years back. Yeah. And um, the whole concept was to jump in a pool. Mm. Um, and so he did that. Yep. And at the time, like agents weren't being that creative with the videos. Sure. So it was kind of a little bit outside of the box. And yeah. um, Gavin saw that, um, messaged Matt, mm. who's also a good friend of ours. Mm. So Matt straight away did an intro. Um, and then, yeah, next, like before we knew it, it was like fly down to Sydney, yeah. we got a property video for you to shoot, did one, and then yeah, the relationship we built there sort of just Pretty epic. kept on going. And yeah. then I, I think he just wanted us to go on the show. So yeah. it was kind of as simple as that. It was, it really wasn't that big a deal. It was yeah. also only like 30 seconds. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> a little true. cameo. Yeah, no, I, was, I, was, I, was, I thought it was cool. We got a lot of clients from it though. Yeah, I bet, yeah. yeah. No, very cool. Yeah, it was have a cool you, show. Have you let the fame go to your head yet? No. Not no? Yet. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if we get on another season. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. exactly. Maybe if they renew you. <laughs> Well, we'll uh, <laughs> um, awesome. So, like, what are some of the business, like, you're basically dealing with almost professional businessmen every day, yeah. real estate, like agents, clients, yeah. things like that. How do you approach that? Like, is it from person to person or is there, like, set terms that you always discuss? How, and how do you find most of your clients? Are they some, do they come to you or do you go to them nowadays? Yeah, it's, we've literally never spent a dollar on any other marketing yep. than, than Instagram. Mm. Um, like, we do sponsored posts on Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. um, and word of mouth. That's the two sort of mediums that we have got every single client yep. we've ever had. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, dealing with them is just, I, I try and take the approach of just being yourself and, and not trying mm -hmm. to um, like reinvent the wheel, yep. promise too much. I did that when we first started. Yeah. It's, it's never going to work well if you promise too much yeah. and, and you can't deliver on it. Yep. So like, yeah, that's, the approach I sort of have taken and it's just a bit of like an under promise over deliver yeah, sort of approach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It took a while to learn that though. Yeah. And yeah, it's just like we try and it, it sounds weird, but you kind of just like you get that feeling with clients. Um, if you're going to like them, if it's mm. going to be a fuck around, just don't even bother. Yeah, right. Like, what's the point for a couple grand? Yeah. And just you're just going to be stressed out. Yeah. Um, it's never going to end well because you're not going to connect. Yeah. But whereas like all of our clients that we have. They're all long-term. They've mm. all been there for three years. Mm. Um, 
and they sort of stay the, the long haul with us because yeah. it's kind of like we give it we we're providing them something yeah. they're also giving us something so it's valuable valuable to both yeah, sides. Yeah, exactly. Like Whereas there's like, that yeah. understanding relationship, right? Yeah. And they probably don't have the time and energy to keep going through that with all the different people. No, nah, so. definitely not. That's like Gavin hasn't really used any content creators through COVID because yeah. he doesn't want to with yeah, anyone else. Well, even though there's hundreds of companies that are as good as us, yeah. better, mm. like they do the same thing as us. Yeah. But it's kind of it is all about the relationship and Every single one of Building our clients. Building a bit of trust, obviously, yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, they all, like, even for photography, um, where Cam's sort of taken the lead on that, um, it's all about that. And, and they like Cam. His photos do, like, you know, 80% of it. So mm. does a video. But mm. if you can't connect with them, then it's never going to last long. Huh. That's what yeah. I think, anyway. That's, yeah, it's, it's never worth the headache. And especially if your work is undervalued, mm. then that can also mess with you a bit. You'd be yeah. like, oh, is my work even good? Yeah. And, if you're constantly you surrounded mentors. by people telling you your work's not good, even yeah. though you know, people are loving it, it's Kim, not very good for you. We'll talk a bit more about your photography and mm. videography style. How would you describe yourself when you do a lot of your projects? Do you, do you find yourself borrowing techniques from other photographers that you've liked instantly, or how did it sort of develop your own style? Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, I don't know. I've, I've always, from a young age, I've mm. paid attention to things like lighting, yep. shadows, and just, I've always like, seen things a little bit differently. Mm. And I think that, that carried over when you pick up a camera, you're then able to capture that. And so it's kind of developed from there. Once you start working out the technicalities of it and, and what, what settings do what, and yep. how to get the shots you want to achieve, mm -hmm. then you have the tools to do it. Yep. Such as an R5, like when I have that in my hand, it's like, 24 to 70 on it you can almost do anything you need yeah so yeah. it's having the the ideas and then learning the in-between of mm. how you can actually turn it into something yeah and i think yeah that's 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 how you sort of feel like you do it yeah yeah great awesome I so. and I, I mean there's not too much out of influence is always going to be there yeah because you're constantly taking in everything yeah like you know tv netflix instagram yeah all of it yeah um but I think too much of that takes you away from what you want your style to be. Mm. So how do you how do you go about staying inspired? Like obviously there's a lot of noise digitally that we go through on a daily basis. How do you sort of switch off to a lot of that? Like obviously when you're sitting in the editing room, maybe it's something you, you find yourself, you know, you your attention just won't be there some days. But like how do you pull up for the next job and, and stay focused? Um, I think minimal like pretty much what i was just saying like minimalizing the time that mm. you're taking in so, like all this content yeah then you, then you start overthinking yeah. everything you're like what am i doing yeah. sort of thing but and you kind of get caught between two styles as exactly well. yeah exactly i find so that's I think, a big problem yeah, yeah yeah massive and just staying focused you know what what work you want to put out and just honing in on that how you're going to do it yep i think that that keeps you quite keeps, focused keeps you going so. when you um when you do have a client necessarily like obviously some of the real estate might be a bit more autopilot but what about something like automotive photography how do you how would you approach that on a on a typical job oh would you would you do you think about the location oh yeah yep okay so, so everything's taken into account there there's usually what's that the bentley one is good yeah example. give us an example oh, yeah, of maybe so one you've done already yeah that was a recent one um campaign for bentley it was experience extraordinary yep that was cool and basically they wanted to blend a green Bentley Bentayga, mm -hmm. which is a new SUV, and sure. kind of make it blend in with nature. Yeah, you know, right. Kind of make it come into one yeah, thing. Yeah, cool. And so um, instantly I thought rainforest, green Bentley, yeah. rainforest, you know. So we went up to Mount Glorious and basically once I'm on the shoot, mm. I, it depends on the shoot as well. You sometimes do a lot of planning, yeah. um, locations and everything, yeah. but sometimes you're just doing running gun shoots. Yeah. And for that one, it, um, yeah, I was just driving around Mount Glorious, um, setting up shots from long down the road, 7200, yeah. 24 to 70, a lot of motion blur stuff. Yep. Um, cool. And I think that's one of my favorite sets yeah. from that one. So it's radical. Yeah. That's, that's obviously a, a quite a, a big achievement unlocked, no doubt, shooting a Bentley campaign. Yeah. That's pretty damn cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's been a, 
a few favourite cars I've shot, yeah. which, has, which has been awesome. That's not too bad a few years after school, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, well, it's kind of how I started. <laughs> like, because like, when I was 14, mm. 13 actually, I started an Instagram account where I just post photos of cars that I saw. Yeah. So I'd go into the city with my dad's yeah. camera and I'd just start snapping away at cars that nice. I liked. And um, that picked up a bit of a following. Nice. I was like, all right, there's something here. So, so the, the passion really sort of shines through with probably a lot of that automotive yeah. based yeah, upon definitely. that. Totally, yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool. You also did a, like a the Giro experience for Lamborghini, yeah. which is like yeah, that was a big uh, one. 30 Lamborghinis. <laughs> um, and that's for Lamborghini Australia. Yeah. Like, so it wasn't just a local thing, which he was the, the chosen photographer out of like literally anyone in Australia for uh, that. So that was another one recently. Yeah. A lot of pressure. That's but, pretty good. Yeah. Which he shot well. on his own as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and that's driving around from the Gold Coast, like a four hour drive from Gold Coast to Brisbane, yeah. shooting one man and, and they were stoked with the end product. So yeah, he's done a couple of big ones. Yeah, yeah. that's epic. And I can, can see it on your face, Tom, but obviously when Cam talks about it, you're pretty proud of what he's been able to yeah. achieve. I mean, yeah, definitely. Yeah. As, as, a, as a boss or a mentor, like, you feel yeah. like you take that upon yourself as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's like, it's awesome. Like a lot of our staff, you know, did things like Cam before, mm. a few jobs here and there and, and like it's a grind, the freelance yeah. photography and yeah. video job. Like, it's paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. Not many basically. people are, yeah, like, whereas like a lot of our guys, you know, looking at towards eighty thousand dollars a year mm. salary to do what you love, like it's pretty it's damn a good. Pretty yeah, satisfying experience to see someone who come out of school to get to this point yeah. in two years. Like that's crazy. It's, it's uh, I think it's a phenomenal effort. I think yeah. it's really cool because as as I said when we talked about it, freelancing is like it's a it's a day, day to day, week to week sort of thing. You don't know where your paycheck's coming from. But if you have someone that's allowing you to explore your creative vision like Cam, yeah. I think that's a pretty cool experience as, as a boss. Definitely. Tom, I think you've done yeah, pretty definitely. well there. And working with, you know, higher end, higher end clients like Lamborghini and Bentley is just, it feels insane. Yeah. You know, when you're actually doing it, you're like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Just and touching, it pushes you a bit. Touching on that as well, like, do you find, like, has, for, for shots, has anything stood out for you that have been a bit crazy, like things don't go to right but end up getting a good result? Has there been any experiences like oh, yeah. that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I think, um, I mean, I don't know how much we can say. On the, yeah, go on. On the, on the, Giro, <laughs> on the Giro one, um, our follow car yeah. that Ben and I were in, it was an Audi RS6 event. Yeah. It, it broke as we were coming up, chasing the cars to go to the next spot. So they were gonna pull over, let us in front, and then yep. we shoot them coming in. Yep. And um, yeah, we were at the back of the pack and it just it just broke. <laughs> so yeah. we're on the side of the road, trying to get the, the hero shots of these 30 yeah, yeah. you know, going up the mountainside. Yeah. And, um, that wasn't ideal. <laughs> when you say it broke, like, is it is it breaking or is the car just broke? It was, it was a um, coolant problem. I think the radiator was playing off. So it just completely yeah. shut off. Yeah. It was just coming up with Rolled. warnings and then the temperature of the engine. Stop. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah it was basically screaming at you to pull over. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Yeah, there's there's been over. many, many occasions. Hard in mouth so. moments as well. A few drone yeah. crashes. Yeah, I can imagine <laughs> that was the other thing. I was like, drones don't always go to plan, I'll be oh, honest. Oh, mate. We've yeah. put probably like 10 down in the in the years. I've had I've had customers <laughs> with with like shooting real estate and, and not telling people that are living in the real estate and they'll end up going to throw things at the drone, knocking it out of the sky. I've had birds <laughs> yep. like We've had down. All, of, all of the above. Yeah. yeah, There's been some pretty hectic crashes to be fair. Yeah. I think DJI Care Refresh is out. Yeah, 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 nice. That's Good for sure. Advice. Yeah. 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 A little plug to DJI Care Refresh. Yeah. Um, in terms of like learning videography, colour grading, things like that. Is that something that you've had to specifically spend some time doing or is that sort of something you learn on the job, Cam? Um, it, every, every set I do, I sort of go for a, a different feel. Like I try and keep my overall consistency in editing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it all does depend on the shoot and the lighting and stuff like that. Yep. But my workflow for each shoot is usually pretty consistent. Yep. So do you spend like, is there like a certain amount of percentage you'll give to yourself to dedicate to editing? Like, is, is that like something you factor in or is it like more so you just go with the flow with, it, with your sort of style? Do you give yourself hours? Like do you say, I'm going to spend two hours here and then I'm going to do three hours editing or is that never followed? Does that it, never I, go to the plan? I set 
like times, yeah. but it's very difficult to follow. Yeah. Um, because you you know there's always variables that you don't expect mm. when you're at a house or on a shoot. Yeah. And yet whether it's moving stuff around or anything like that, yeah. you're never quite ready. Um, but I usually spend a lot of time on site, yep. especially with houses. Mm. I like to spend a few hours going through, make sure I got everything, and spend time on each shot. Yep. Um, and then I'll usually edit the full next day. Mm. Um, just to make sure it's all good. Yep. And because I'm shooting HDRs, you know, there's a lot of masking involved yeah. in Photoshop. Yeah. Um, so that usually takes a long a lot time. Computer power as well, expensive computers. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty yeah. good so setup. I'm sure Tom knows a bit about. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a bit of money there. <laughs> I bet. And like hand handheld or gimbals, is that something like obviously people will want to know specifics in terms of gear, but do you like tend to handheld a lot of your video or do you like to use gimbals? How does it, how, how does it work usually for video for you guys? You just run and gun mainly? Well, usually we have like two people, yeah, yeah. three people shooting yeah. and one will be on the gimbal, yeah. one will be on like a tripod and then another just getting handheld mm. stuff. And then in later on in post you can, you know, throw them all together and Yep. Yeah, get a different feeling from each clip. Yeah, gotcha. you, you kind of need it all. The stabilizers, like for real estate, that's been the bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a must for real estate. Yeah. Ronan, Ronan S, Ronan M. Yeah, um, like yeah, those things for for like twelve hundred bucks or whatever they are, you can shoot thousands value. of property videos. Yeah, um, and yeah, like definitely for the property videos, uh, stabilizer footage. But yeah, and even actually for the lifestyle stuff, we we do tend to push mainly towards stabilized footage yep. but handhelds so obviously there's awesome. a lot of people that are like oh you gotta do handheld it looks yeah. more natural and then there's the yeah, guys that swear by yeah, the they can do their thing like we do our thing yeah do whatever like do whatever i don't works. really care what anyone else thinks yep. like that's what we do and we're doing our jobs with that and, mm. and our clients like that so i think there's just some shots you can't get without a gimbal yeah, yeah. Sure. so it's like long yeah. shots yeah. where's the argument you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah i think Handheld definitely has its place Good as well. And, yeah. and like lighting for jobs, do you typically depend on the natural light or the lighting of the homes you're going into or is that something you bring in separately as well? Natural. Always natural for me. Natural. I mean, there's been a few odd jobs here and there where I'll experiment with lighting and stuff, yep. but I think natural light, I've always I've been accustomed to it. I like using what's in front of me because mm -hmm. um, then you're also giving the viewer of the photo yep. an experience of what they're actually going to see if they were there. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Whereas if you start introducing lights and stuff, you know, yeah. they rock up to a to a house or look at a car and they're like, yeah. you know, and this looks a bit different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, it certainly does have its yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. So, like interviews, yeah. a lot of yeah. cars that we've shot as well, like in studio yeah. and yeah. stuff, obviously. Yeah, so studios and stuff, you're going to need light. Yeah, for like, sure. What are you doing there? So <laughs> it's, it's basically dependent on on, on what you're doing and, and how you're going to do it as well, obviously. Yeah, like, actually, there's no there's no one way or two ways about it. Yeah, that. we sort of outsource as well. So we did a music video uh, like a few nights ago, mm. and we had a Brizzy guy, Luke Cartillier. Yeah. He he um was our lighting guy for that yeah, for cool. that night, and yeah. like we, we don't have his 20 years of experience. Yeah. He's got like a truck with yeah. hundred thousand yeah. dollars worth yeah. of gear. Yeah. So yeah. like, what's the point of us doing that? For sure. So we outsourced to him and and. More and more, we never used to, but you got to outsource and, and yeah. sort of that's the other thing, you isn't can. it? Yeah, I find color grading as well. Absolutely, outsource. absolutely, because I, I I find like everyone wants to do everything and and say that they've touched every part of the thing, yeah. but re in reality, when you're handing off to a client and you've got deadlines, it's not always possible, is it? Totally. Yeah, yeah it depends what you're working on. Like a real estate video, we do full in house. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're looking at like bigger productions mm. where there, there's weeks involved, there's Da Vinci color grading, yeah. there's, 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 years, like, there's, there's years and years like, of knowledge there. We can't right? learn yeah. that, we can't, you can't do it all, yeah. um, but people understand that. Yeah. Like, there's no problem with doing that. Yeah, no, I don't think so either, but obviously there are the certain type of people, but I think also if you're doing it individually, then sure, but if you're working on your bigger, bigger production, then it can be quite difficult. Um, Tom, I'll, I'll probably ask you a bit more about your business um, side of things as well. Yeah. Bringing the team, you got a bit more of a larger team now. How do you bring together everyone? Like, is that something that you guys will sit down and do a meeting every now and then to just to keep everyone yeah. refreshed yeah. and see how everyone's going? How do yeah. You? yeah, yeah, totally. That's yeah. like my favorite thing yeah. about my job and, and what I do for a living, yeah. like is the team management and people management. Um, we like, the boys laugh sometimes, but like every Monday morning we have a, sort of one to two hour meeting nice. every single Monday morning yeah. and that's just 
talk, talk a bit of shit about the weekend, yeah. um, watch, watch movies, movies, films, edits, edits from any industry around around the world, whatever it is, for, for an hour or so. Yeah. Um, and that anyone can show that. Um, it can be photos, whatever, just whatever we like content-wise yeah. that is going to improve us or good inspiration. Yeah. And then we spend an hour talking about the week that was mm. and, and good things from that, things we can improve on. Yeah. Um, and I just like, yeah, I think it's important. It's really hard. Sometimes yeah. people don't want to talk about things that you can improve on or we did for badly. Sure. So sure. like bringing that up in a social environment has been something that's super powerful because mm. like it allows people to understand we're not just going to nail it yeah because we stuff stuff up like every and, time and i'm sure everyone in the team has had like days where they probably feel pretty shit about what yeah, they've done or totally, like feedback yeah. from clients or whatever yeah but if you yeah. probably unpack it as a team yeah you got to unpack probably it probably feels pretty pretty good that someone yeah. else has had that same problem right totally yeah. yeah so that's like something that i really like doing and i think um the boys actually get like a lot out of it as well yep. um, and then yeah we, we do our best to have training days and things mm. like that um, upskilling in, in things like colour grading which we weren't able to do you can yeah. do basic premiere colour grading yeah. but going to another level is another skill in itself For sure. so yeah like that that side of things is is probably my favourite part of running a business yeah yeah, cool. No, I, I really like that. And obviously I can see the passion on your face when you talk about it, which is a pretty cool thing, Tom. Um, also, obviously we'll go through a couple other questions from the audience as well, but um, just having a look here. Uh, X Media, like, is it, are you operating now in Sydney and Brisbane? Is that something that you're op operating interstate now as well, or are you still sticking to Brisbane? Most of uh, it. Pretty much sticking to Brisbane, we fly down project specific. So if someone wants to pay for our flights and and and, mm. and, and travel included, there'll be we'll certain that. clients that might be wanting yeah, to do something. Absolutely, like that. Yeah. And, and we before COVID we did that once a week. Mm. So we were up and down, but it's not really sustainable. We just don't want to um, have a team down there that we don't have control over mm. in terms of like I just said, the team meetings, yeah. things like that, like. Um, until we can find someone that can sort of run the, a business mm. and, and sort of franchise day day. out a bit. Yeah, yeah there's, there's no point in doing that. I'd rather nail it in Brisbane and, yeah. and get better and better here yeah. um, before opening an, another team there. But yeah, we've done projects like in Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, all across Tassie, like yeah. New Zealand, like all, all over the shop. Yeah. But not going to set up teams until, sure. until a bit later on, I think. Work down there, obviously, with COVID and everything, is probably yeah. a little bit harder. Have you guys been pretty lucky with that? Obviously, Brisbane in general, I think Queensland has been pretty lucky with COVID, yeah. like losing jobs and, and yeah, obviously yeah, we had a, freelancing has been pretty tough. A yeah, bit. I bet. Yeah, it's we, we've been lucky in some um, ways, like just adapting and mm. changing your business offering, changing what you do. Yeah, like we used to do the real estate videos with 60 seconds, mm. um, and the agent wouldn't be in it really, we'll just do like an intro. And then as soon as COVID hit, um, we started doing like these five to 10 minute walkthrough videos mm. with the agent um, because no one could do open homes. Yeah, sure. And then that was something that for a real estate agent, they're like, fuck, we should do that. Yeah. Like that that's gonna add value. Yeah. Um, so then we made money through that. Yeah. And then yeah, there was a little period there where it was like really, really worrying when yeah. it first came. Yeah. And we, we um, yeah, had to scale back a little bit and mm. take it easy, but then yeah, you can always kind of find a way um, if, you, if you want to. Yeah, and you've got to stay pretty flexible and tangible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the benefits of having a, like a still a small business that yeah. you guys can still work remotely if needed or you can switch things up if you need to as well. Yeah, yeah, we need to get better at that. <laughs> we haven't really worked remotely. Do you guys come into the office most days? Like, is Every that, day, yeah, man. Right? There's no okay. like, yeah, eight o'clock sharp. Cam likes to be a few minutes late, <laughs> but it's like, no rush. yeah, no, nah, we like to, like, yeah, it's all about sure a team. Sure you stay back later, Cam. So yeah, of like, course he does. I'm here till 8.40, he's like, why are you one minute late? <laughs> yeah, it's a team thing, yeah. it's like, we're all on the same team, yeah. trying to achieve the same goals, so mm -hmm. we're all there, like, we only have full-time staff, yeah. no part-time, no casuals. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, it's like... Everyone's committed, everyone's yeah, all in. Yeah, 100%, and I think you reap the rewards, like... Cam, for example, probably wouldn't have shot Bentley, Lamborghini, mm. Audi, like mm. name it. We sh he shot a home last year that was like $50 million. It's like, yeah. how are you going to do that on your own? Yeah. Like that's, it just doesn't exist. Yeah. So and how are you going to manage the business side of it yeah, if, you, yeah, totally. if you are doing that? You yeah, know there's, I mean? there's benefits to 
being, being part, part of that team environment. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, we always look for people that want that as well. So in your, in your team now, what sort of is your hierarchy? Do you have like four standalone photographer, videographers, or do you, have you got specialties of each role? How does yeah, it sort of so work? We, um, we have two photographers. Yep. Cam obviously heads that up. Yep. That's only been for the last year. He's sort of taken that role on. So nice. we will grow and looking for photographers every day. Yep. Like if anyone wants to come in. I mean, don't <laughs> flood the DMs. But, <laughs> Just but do what Cam did, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so yeah. building that team up. But to slow burn, the, like, yep. there's no need to rush it. Rather get the quality right. And then we've got seven videographers slash video editors yep so everyone Jeez. does both yep um and then yeah we kind of try and stay on all the same level of like there's no real directors mm. whereas obviously you've got to have that title sometimes yeah. but in the office everyone's sort of on the same level and yep. there's jobs that need to be done that day yep. and whoever's doing it get they get assigned the tasks yep. and and they get done but they can be swapped from one to the other no one's really better than anyone else sure. in that regard it's sure. just sort of wh whoever's going to be the right man for the job they go for it and yeah. that's it yeah. and the same for filming as well but yeah we're kind of looking to expand that to having like a colorist on and sure potentially like a director and stuff like that whereas we all sort of direct the productions ourselves yeah. as well which is as i'm sure you know mm -hmm. like a bit of a mission yeah hold absolutely. the camera direct talk to talent like the whole works Stuff. One man band. Yeah, it's tough. It's hustling. And then you've got to manage the TikTok account. <laughs> <laughs> um, We've got someone for that now. Oh, you got someone yeah, yeah. for that. Okay. For so. all our 30 followers on TikTok <laughs> from a video hey, we posted two years ago. <laughs> Get Gavin on. You'll be right. Yeah, then you'll go. Yeah, <laughs> sure. That'll actually do it. Um, so, Cam, stepping into the director of photography role at X Media, that's probably something now that you're, you've got people under your wing a little bit. How do you manage that as a photographer, videographer yourself? You've probably you've known what it's like starting off, so you can yeah. probably be on the same page a lot of the time. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I mean, it was definitely a change. Yeah. Like, you're, you're so used to creating your own work and yeah. knowing exactly what to do. Yep. You know, having someone else trying to describe what you want to get out mm. of a shoot is, is sometimes, it's not difficult describing it, yeah. but actually getting it yeah. is, is sometimes. Um, so just basically, yeah. Like, I, I give all my knowledge and mm. they help me out as well yep. and, and vice versa. So. It's been a learning cool. experience, yeah. but it's very valuable. Yeah, and absolutely. You can't, you can't do everything with, yeah. on your own. So. I always tell you that. Eh? Yeah. As like much as you want scale. to, you want to have your own creative di direction and yeah. vision and you want to put all in one place, yeah. but... It's you, have to to you have to communicate that's a, that's it too. You have to communicate it. That's a big one. Else. That's yeah. a big one because exactly. getting it out of your head and to someone else, yeah. it's not, yeah. not that easy. It's not it's that not, easy. No. Um, digital presence, Tom, like... Obviously, Instagram has been a driving yeah. force for you guys. Is that just like the one and done solution, do you find? Or do you find you'll have to keep constantly exploring new avenues there? Or Yeah, definitely. Like we've sort of just doubled down on that one, but everyone's going to have a different place to be. Like LinkedIn can work for people, mm. Facebook works for people. We just like, we went hard on, on Insta. Mm. We're starting TikTok now, which I refuse to. Yeah. It makes me sick. Yeah. And I was like, but we've got younger guys in the team now and they're all over yeah. and they're saying like, you've got to do it. So I'm, we're starting it out, but like. I got my yeah. brother sending me links. And I'm like, bro, I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. sending me these links. I went on it once and it's quite a journey. It's, it's a, quite yeah, interesting. It's, <laughs> Yeah, it's not for me, but, like, <laughs> yeah, hey, but maybe like, I'll come around. I'm not you got to sure. stay with the times. I remember my dad, like, uh, way back when, mm. he was like, what is this Instagram yeah. shit? And I don't want to be that guy who's like, what's, yeah. what's this? You've got you've to you've be got on to adapt top of to it. Because, yeah. like, yeah, Insta's... Yeah, so we just put all in to Insta and we take, like, you know, we spend 10 hours a week probably on yeah. perfecting sort of what goes up there. Um, How, the style, the colours, the video. Yeah, because it's it's a pretty like it's a time-consuming thing. Right? Yeah, it's sickening it yeah. how much time spent on and, it. But and who personally does it in the team? Is it like do you take turns, or is it something that you guys have just got a like a combined goal? Like, do you go on a job and film parts as a story? Like, how do you operate the BTS side? Of yeah, it? we try to do that. I yeah. sort of manage it. That's my that's my main job okay. is Insta. Yep. Um, so I do that. Messages me beforehand. Like, this is good. <laughs> but like, yeah, I've got my right hand it's man sort of approving it. Yeah. But Cam likes anything we shoot um, that week. Mm. We'll get um, some X media edits. Yeah. So we might change it up if we don't like what we created for 
the customer because that was their brief. Mm. Like we might change it up, that will go live. Yeah. Um, same with videos, same with stories. The boys will go out and I'll urge them to get stories. They don't yeah, do it often, of but yeah. we try our very yeah. best to do it. Something um, you don't even think about when you're in the zone. Like you're, nah, you're here to do a, a job, thing. you know, yeah, like 100%. thinking it. But obviously it's quite an important facet of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it's our business tool. And it's how we get more jobs. Mm. And, and because we've built a following now, people want us to work with them yeah. because we're gonna, they're gonna be seen on our audience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it definitely works. Like the um, the property video we did last year for this hectic house in Sydney, we had like way more views than any of the real yeah. estate agents, any of the real estate dot com. Yeah. So it was like. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. Yeah, we're not the ones getting paid the commission. But we had way more, <laughs> way more engagement on our stuff. That's so cool. It's, it's interesting. I saw, I saw that one the other day. It's a private Vimeo link that had like yeah. 10k views or something. Yeah, yeah. which means it's just yeah, it's very weird. Center of the place. I don't know, Someone's yeah. got the link passed. So it's, yeah. it's powerful anyway. Yeah. Like that's the one thing. Whatever platform you choose, like I would definitely go for gold mm. on and, and, and put everything you can into into it whether it's all of them or just a couple we, yeah. we stick to insta but yeah starting out was it like a bit of a joke between friends like you'll, you'll do this on instagram and like yeah sure like it's not gonna pretty turn much. out yeah, yeah when, did it, when did it become reality for you you think um like the followers or well just like in general for x media like yeah obviously you started another business pre x media but like at the start, it would have been like, oh, sure, this isn't going to work out. Yeah. If I just keep uploading this content every yeah. day, it's not going to work out. But obviously yeah. the proof's in the pudding, right? Yeah, I don't know. Never really thought about yeah. that, but it just keep rolling on. Like we still got like a long way to, to go before we're doing anything major. Yeah. Like, yeah, haven't even thought about that yet. Yeah, cool. And, and Cam, like going, bypassing, when we talk about drone photography and videography now, laws are quite, can be quite tough. How do, how do you deal with and juggle with that? Is it you leave that up to Tom to deal with any angry neighbours or anything like that, or is it? When you get the the angry people, you know, it's, what, what kind of drone is that? You will yep. have to be flying that here. Yep. How high does it go? How far does it go? Yep. Do you have a vest or something that proves that you? I think we should get a vest. As <laughs> house approved, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's sometimes a bit distracting. Yeah, but usually you kind of just you either politely ask them to leave yep. if you don't think they're going to kick up a fuss. Yeah. Or um, if they are, then you kind of just walk away. Yeah, true. That's I mean, it's all you can do, especially when you know you're you're being paid to be there. You're yeah. allowed to be flying it's a drone. drone. It's a, it's you're there for a job. Yep. Um, and, and and like with the laws and stuff, is that something you guys are constantly looking into? Because like obviously for for your gigs, it's quite a professional thing. So you've got to have yeah. some backing there. Is that yeah, something that you're constantly looking into? Because I think they're changing quite rapidly now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, yeah. It's a very grey area in my opinion as well. And like yeah, if you could ask anyone else that's ever flown a drone. Yeah, like, it's, it's weirdly thing. unregulated, yeah. but yeah. there's also a lot of rules. Yeah, so a lot of rules, but like it's... You have to fill in gaps your own sometimes. Yeah, so true. Not yeah. many people, yeah. Like we try and follow all the rules, yeah. but also like trying to stay within 30 metres, mm. uh, outside of 30 metres from buildings yeah. is kind of like a bit of a joke because like where are you taking off from? Yeah, there, exactly. Like, like, <laughs> where are you taking where, off from Tenerife? Where, where in you find about 30 <laughs> um, metres away? So it's yeah. kind of confusing, but yeah, for the bigger jobs, we outsource that to a couple young fellas here in Brizzy who are like, they've got the big drones and everything. We sort of stick to the baby ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the rules are always ever changing. Yeah, and probably like read between the line type thing yeah. as well. Like, I think one of the rules is you can't fly over people and stuff, but I've seen people fly them on the beach. So I'm like, how oh, yeah. does that work? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy yeah man. and it's like yeah th at the end of the day like we're doing this a professional service for a client mm. these are expensive drones it's like why people think you're w like watching them or something mm. it's like, why yeah. would we be watching you them? get a lot of people with like four or five hours four? Down, come up to you <laughs> asking if you're filming them and you're like i have no reason to do that yeah, why would you do that yeah. there's no benefit to me doing that um neighborhood to watch trippers <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah a bunch of stoners <laughs> <laughs> um your Zoom effects, uh, that's a question that keeps getting asked a lot from the audience at home. That's obviously a big, I think a big thing in your videos. Is there, is there a certain style that you borrowed that from? How did you come about the Zoom effects? And, and I've seen a lot of transitions from your night to day transitions and your day to night, they're pretty cool. 
you want to talk a bit about your effects? Obviously, without giving too much away. Yeah, without giving away the yeah, secrets the, of the, the trade. secret sauce. Yeah, but uh, most of it's done in since we have the Adobe workflow, mm. the Premiere and After Effects link. So we're always right. using After Effects for you know the time remapping, the, mm. the switch between night and day. Yeah. Um, all of that's done in After Effects yeah. pretty much. I thought that the, the night to day and the day to night one was pretty cool, personally. Yeah, I mean, yeah was that good fun, those ones? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. Everyone has their own ways of doing it. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's no drag and drop presets where you, everything looks good. And yeah. It's, it, it's a very much a process. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's. Look it up on YouTube. You <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, exactly. I don't know what else to test things out. Just, yeah, just, you got to see what works. Now, right? Yeah, you're doing the wrong yeah. thing if you don't know how to do it and yeah. you haven't tested it out because that's all we did. Yeah. Like, just got to give it a go. Yeah, there's no like magic medicine. It's just like test things out until it looks mint. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, we've probably got about 10 minutes to go. So if anyone has any questions at home, feel free to, to ask as well. Um, basically, just jumping into it from X Media's point of view, where do you see you guys are going to go in the next couple of years? Is expansion on the mind? Like obviously, you've got the partnership with Grayer as well. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. Um, Rob's been a good friend of ours for many years now before we were doing any businesses yeah. or anything like that. Um, so I feel like you guys are one of the first to do a collaboration with like, someone like Grayer. I think that's yeah. like a media team. Yeah, they're, and they're property pretty cool. is pretty, pretty, and construction pretty damn cool. Yeah, yeah, and like they do crazy stuff in their field, yeah. and like a lot of inspiration from Rob for me personally as well. Like as a business mentor, mm. um, he's helped like a crazy deal. Um, how did that come? Like how did that come about? Tom? Yeah, it's crazy. It's just like I said, like the word of mouth thing. We did a video like five years ago, yeah. a long, long time ago. Yeah. Which is more than that now. Um, for a real estate agent, and Rob. When he was still on the tools, wasn't a big businessman like he is now. Yeah. No G wagon yeah. or anything. Yeah. Um, he, um, yeah, he was just a build at, the yeah. point, at that point who yeah. loved content, yeah. had a keen eye for yeah. it, and he reached out to the agent and said, "Who did that video?" And mm. the agent was like, "No, I'm not telling you. Yeah. I didn't want to tell him yeah. that." He got the name, and then I met him for a coffee, um, and just kicked it off. And yeah, he's very like-minded yeah. to me and everything so yeah. we went from there and then yeah decided it's definitely worthwhile mm. seeking out potentially a relationship here because yeah. um he obviously builds the best homes in brisbane absolutely um and so we get to make videos for them and that really yeah. helped us like being able to film because you know every house is going to be epic right? yeah so yeah. that's that, that's another thing like yeah it's pretty you, awesome. you do need to start from somewhere where it's going to be like okay yeah. i'm excited to do this yeah right back in the day though you, like he's it's funny because everyone thinks, like, they're a massive brand mm. now as well, but even them, mm. back when I met him, the houses weren't like they are now. Yeah. Um, so he's yeah. grown exponentially as well, yeah. and it's, it's been so motivating too. They kind of nailed the, the timing with the online, you know, yeah. Instagram and everything as well. Yeah. That was the same time X Media yeah, started. Yeah, he's another person that smashes in stuff, mm -hmm. does it all himself to this day. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, he's really reaped the rewards. Yeah, absolutely. And like talking your inspiration for X Media, where do you, like, ha are you constantly looking for inspiration or is that something that sort of just comes to you? Is that the type of person you are? I think it's our team. Yeah. Like I, I get inspired to, about team management and, and excelling and, and motivating the team and, yeah. and pushing for bigger jobs and things. But the team are the inspiration behind like all of the videos and effects, transitions, photographs, drone. We do like the FPV drones now, yeah. like all that stuff is all the lads and like them pushing to get to next level. And um, my business partner, Ben, always says like, I go and find these jobs mm. and, and they execute. Right. Um, so it's all those guys yeah. who are creative behind it. Um, What's, what's Ben up to these days? So. Ben, ben doesn't like doing these right. things. So, he, <laughs> so he's just cruising. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's his birthday tomorrow. So okay. He's, um, you just he's out at dinner. He's yeah. day off. Yeah, he didn't yeah. want to come into this. No. Yeah, right. but yeah, so yeah, Ben um, definitely is a driving force behind all of the video production that you see. And, yep. um, he sort of manages a team and quality control. And like, yeah, one thing we do really well is not afraid to tell someone that needs to be changed. Mm. Or if, if that's not yeah. 
it, how it scares yeah. the employees when they first start. <laughs> just, yeah. be up I can see no hands a bit scarred from the oh, it's, early it's, moments. It's, it's pretty funny. Like later on, you understand why. Yeah, you know, yeah. Start, It's just like just delete it, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Spend a lot of time on that. Man. Yeah, right. Direct. Okay. Yeah. Don't beat around the bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't beat around the bush. But that's the best way to learn. But yeah, it's so. been good in in the sense of like we don't push shit out the door. It's mm. always at least been vetoed by a couple of people. Yeah, and you've got to have like. Because everything you release online is, is probably going to be held to a high regard. Yeah. So you've got to maintain that, right? Definitely. Yeah. And yeah, so that's where he comes in. And yeah, you might see him next time on an yeah. interview or something. I'll have to bring him in for a beer or something. <laughs> yeah, he'd definitely be on the beer. Well. <laughs> um, Cam, just quickly as well before we wrap up, um, how would you say to the people at home how to do what you're doing? How, what's, the, what's the entry point, do you reckon? Um, I think... I was going to say pick up a camera, <laughs> but at the same time, iPhones, man. Yeah. It, you, you got your cameras in your mm -hmm. pocket. Like, iPhones coming, you reckon? Yeah, well, if, if you want to try and get creative with stuff and you want to start getting into photography, just mm -hmm. snap a few photos in your phone first. Make yep. sure you know what you're, that's something you like doing. Yeah. You know, they're plenty capable. Um, and then, yeah, enter with a mid, you know, mid yeah. level range DSLR and then, yep. and then go from there. Check yeah. out your local camera shop. Yeah, yeah, bro. Camera bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, awesome. Cheeky plug. Good plug. <laughs> I'll send you the invoice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cheers. Um, nice, Cam. Well, we're just about to wrap up. There was a question of uh, X Media merch. You got any merch on the way? You got merch at the moment? What's yeah, we going? used to do it a lot. We used to do like giveaways and stuff. You worried people are going to turn up to a real estate gig with a camera in the X Media <laughs> shirt? Nah, nah. If people are interested, we, we can do another run. Yeah. Um, yeah, people for some reason have made, made to order, order basically. Yeah, grown to like it. <laughs> so it's kind of like we just do an Instagram poll soon. If people want it, yeah, yeah we can follow up. We can do yeah, some more. All of our friends and stuff always hound us for the hoodies and, yeah. and caps and stuff. But yeah, yeah we can. There might be a there's online enough, store. See if there's enough people out there. The guys will do another drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Tom would love to do that. Um, awesome. Well, sorry about the start, boys. It was I was looking at your face when I was trying to do the intro. And, and you were just smiling. I was like, what is this guy smiling for? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's been a pleasure, Cam, Tom. Um, pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Is there anything else you wanted to say? Any like um, links to your Instagram? Do you want to give us your Instagram handle? Yeah. Um, Website as well? Please. Yeah, both just type in X Media. <laughs> but pretty straightforward. But um, yeah, otherwise, thanks guys for having us. Yep. Yeah, um, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, for, thanks very much. So we've got another. Uh, webinar coming up on February the 8th with Sean Scott, which would be really interesting. Uh, another one to check out. He is a very good uh, burly photographer, um, surf photographer, and a lot of other things as well. So that'll be another exciting one on Feb 8th. But thanks for bo boys for joining us. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.